Hello and welcome to the Killer Radio Show. What is going on? I'm Ryan Mason of the Cast of Killers. I'm Eric Thorson of the Cast of Killers. And this mic is super hot right now, trying to turn it down. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, airways. We got some little kids running around right now. You can probably hear them too. Little annoying kids. How's everybody doing out there? Welcome to the Killer Radio Show on RiverWestRadio.com. Coming to you live every Tuesday night. The uh, radio arm of the cast of Killers. I'm Ryan Mason, Eric Thorson. We've got Jason Hillman, who's outside right now, who you can see on the camera if you're listening live. Uh, you can find us on RiverWestRadio.com. You can tweet the show at Cast of Killers. Hashtag Killer Radio. Cast of Killers is, of course, spelled C-A-S-T-E of Killers. And you can email us at cok.killerradio at gmail.com. And tweet at us. And tweet at us. I just said that. Yeah, but I mean, you're going to want to tweet at us before you email us. Yeah, I'm not tweet gonna, at, yeah. We're not reading emails off the air. We're reading tweets off Tweet the air. at us. That's your, that's your number one right there. Make sure you tweet at us. Or you could call us. Or you could call us at uh, 414-935-2951. Eric and I are both a little under the weather, so we're sorry if we sound like garbage. Yeah. Uh, but nasally yeah but hopefully Jason's healthy that would be good um, but yeah we had an eventful week yeah we super. had an eventful week we've got we've got some good guests on the show this week as well we've got Sean Shelnut comedian Sean Shelnut. extraordinaire in studio we've got Sorandi Clichizos, Clichizos is going to be joining us as well whose name is slightly more difficult to say than Sean Shelnut yeah and we've we got also, a Pulowski, we got a complete Clichizos we're all yeah, over we're all over the place and we've got you know, music that was uh, the uh, uh, the Blue Diamond Band Nato Coles and uh so thank you to them. But we've also got music donated. A uh, friend of Sarandi's, the Honest Sleeves, are going to be featured later in the show. So that should be pretty cool. You excited for that? They're, they're kind of, uh, they're kind of uh, like Chan Marshall-y, like uh, Cat Power-ish. Very, very cool stuff. So I'm excited for that. Um, welcome to the show, yeah. What was, it, what was the highlight of your week? Was it Seven Mile Fair? It was Seven Mile Fair. We Absolutely. went to Seven Mile Fair, everybody. <laughs> We went. We did it. We did. If you don't know what Seven Mile Fair is, uh, good for you. First of all. <laughs> uh, Seven Mile Fair is like a swap meet that is a permanent swap meet that's in like Racine County. And it is just like, it's kind of the ends of the earth in a lot of ways. <laughs> like it is just like a weird place. Good times to share. Yeah, good times to share <laughs> at Seven Mile Fair. And they sell everything. Like they're notorious for selling. Like if you wanted to buy a drum of laundry detergent and a bag of bras you could do it there <laughs> yeah he wanted a free massage and a chicken uh seven mile fair there you go yeah eric was pricing chickens while we were there yeah eight yeah. bucks it's a deal i guess that's a deal that's i don't know deal. eight bucks for a chicken how, how would you even know I guess that's a good point. I just figured they were like, I don't know, $200. Uh, <laughs> I just thought it was weird when you walked up and you were like, how much is this duck? <laughs> and they were like, it's a chicken. And you're like, oh, okay. Uh, I can only <laughs> eight bucks then. <laughs> I fed a llama. You fed a llama? Yeah. I, no, I'm not dropping the fact that you tried to buy a chicken because I drove. <laughs> I drove us there. And you were like haggling with a guy about a chicken. And I was like, if he would have gone, I offered him five bucks. If he would have took five bucks, I had on the spot chicken. I would have. What would you have done? with it held it out the window the whole time yeah because that thing was not coming in my car you were like three dollars away then from i could have bought a bird then i could have bought a bird cage somewhere else uh at something else you don't put a chicken in a bird cage that's not how that works they're birds right isn't it's not how that works no how would you know I, I've been to the state fair. And they're not even, well, I guess they're in cages there. But yeah, you were going to bring a chicken into my car. And I was like, I'm ready to not be friends with you. Like, I was like, if he haggles this guy down to five bucks and buys this chicken, I'm, he's walking home. Like, yeah, he's but walking home. You would have been my friend again when I gave you free eggs. I don't need eggs. So there. Why are there gluten in eggs? No, there's no gluten. It <laughs> just that doesn't work for me. Okay. So you were gonna, you were, what would you, like? Were you gonna put it in a cage in your backyard or something? Like, cause that's like, it would have definitely got murdered by a raccoon. Then. Yeah. Or my neighbors have pit bulls. I think would have not lasted a second. What What was your plan then? Did you not have a plan? You were just, you were caught up in the moment haggling for I a was, chicken. I had the seven mile fever. I was like, man, I'm I'm getting a chicken. You were getting a chicken. <laughs> no, and they had pigeons, and I was like, wow, I didn't know that. 
Yeah, Eric came over to Jason and I after he had talked to the chicken person. He was like, eight bucks. Like, we were supposed to be like, that's a great deal. <laughs> Do it, man. Like, like, you that's can, what I was looking for. You can I was buy like, one. You should get a chicken. You can buy one plucked and, like, washed and ready to eat for, like, six bucks. So. Yeah, but then if I name it, I would feel bad. Like, I couldn't name it and then eat it right away. You have to do that, though. That's what they do. That's what my girlfriend was telling me. They do that on the uh, on the show, Tyler's and Tierra's. They were sh- showing one family, and they name the deer that they kill every year. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then the little girl was just walking around going, like, <laughs> you guys want to bite a Darlene? <laughs> like, that was her thing. Honey Boo Boo. She got her own spinoff. Oh, yeah. Honey, yeah. I heard about that. I didn't know what a Honey Boo Boo was until. Now you know. Now I know, yeah. Yeah. Tweet in if you, you if you've ever bought a chicken. Tweet in and tell yeah. Eric it's a terrible idea. <laughs> like they just they just poop everywhere, right? They just chicken poop yes. everywhere, yes. and they eat gravel. I guess that's cheap. Gravel's cheap. Yeah, gravel's pretty cheap. Yeah, I were you weren't planning to eat it. You were just using it for the eggs. That's what you were planning to do. I'm so, so sorry. Oh, Jason's oh, here. Jason's He's late. Tardy to the party. Yeah, I'm very. It is yeah. surprising when Jason shows up late. Yeah, isn't it? Shocking. It is shocking. shocking. I'm gonna sit over here. Well, now sit over there. With yeah, the, the camera's microphone. already on you. Yeah. No, I don't want the camera. And now he doesn't want to sit in his spot. He doesn't showing want to be on up, time. Showing up late, switching seats. I'm like a rebellious teenager. Yeah, we were just talking about Seven Mile Fair and how uh, Eric was gonna buy a chicken. Oh my God! Yeah, you were really into those chickens. We were supposed to only be there for like maybe a good couple of minutes, and you were just. Hey, how much does this chicken cost? What's going on over here? I was into it. What's this one about? What, well, I mean, it's what, it's legal what is the to count on this one. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Does it gobble well? <laughs> no, it's a chicken. They don't gobble at all. They cluck, right? Yeah, they yeah, cluck. Sorry, they cluck. My apologies. See? Like yeah, yeah. So, but we all we all went, we all came home with something from Seven Mile Fair. Yes. Tweet yep. us your Seven Mile Fair stories. Like it, it is crazy. Like it's a crazy place. They sell. Everything you could possibly imagine. Lots, lots of imaginary samurai yeah. swords. <laughs> lots of stuff with like marijuana symbols on it. <laughs> Eric bought a shirt that said YOLO yep. because YOLO. YOLO. And Jason got some uh, stupid glasses. Ryan got a um, a walking. Ryan got a walking taco. I got a walking taco because that's how I roll. Yeah, it's gluten free. Uh, walking tacos. Tell me about, what about the chili cheese bag? That's what I got, the walking taco. Oh, is that, that's, what that's called? That is what that's called. Why do I keep talking? I was talking to Ryan Lowe, and Ryan, I was like, yeah, you know, we went to some uh, fair. Ryan got this weird, like, Frito thing in a bag, and he's like, oh, a walking taco. Like, You've he, never heard of a walking taco? I, until then, no. I, I, it's where they take the Fritos, right, and then they, they open the Frito bag, and they just pour chili into it and cheese and then you eat it with a fork it's it's amazing and yeah. then you go the cheeto bag or the frito bag is the uh actual bowl that you're eating out of really so it's like you're a piece of white trash and then you're at seven mile fair so that's true yeah so that's cool um a lot of uh i mean we sh- it's not like white trash it's it's I mean, it's mostly it's Mexican people. A lot people. of very nice families looking for a good time and some deals in the weekend. I don't know what you're trying to imply, Ryan. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. I well, thought, then I saw a lot of very wholesome families of no specific race or creed walking through there looking for a good deal, having a good time with their family. I don't. Uh, I, I, t- I saw a lot of Mexicans of no specific race or creed. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of Latinos. Yeah. Uh, well. Okay. Which wholesome family is uh, going there to buy the uh, T-shirt that says "Looks like Barbie, smokes like Marley"? Can I ask <laughs> she, that? She has a very large family that she barely pays attention. To. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Family. I family of drug dealers. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things with like weed fam, stuff on mostly, it. Mostly. Mostly. A lot of fam. Jason got a cool. Uh, what was the Clinton Gore? Clinton, Clinton Gore, Gore, 92. 92 yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was bent. I think as just like. And that guy was like, metaphor. "This wasn't bent before you got here." Yeah. And you're like, "I'm buying it. Like, does it even matter?" <laughs> It's bent. Like, I'll just I, give that one to you. It's bent. It's, is that what he said? Yeah, I just got, I got it for free. Cool. He must have been a Republican. Yeah. He's like, I'm trying to move all this Clinton yeah. Gore stuff. I don't know how I got a hold of this stuff. He's like, yeah, once, once uh, My we. My gay daughter gave it all to me. <laughs> oh god. She... Once we elect Mitt Romney, I'm no longer going to be selling buttons at Seven Mile Fair. <laughs> like, that guy's like, they're going to trickle this thing down. Yep. Trickle it all the way down to Seven Mile Fair. <laughs> let me let me say this. That's where it trickles down. Trickle down theory doesn't work. Uh, I know because I went to Seven Mile Fair. Okay. <laughs> I saw somebody selling old rusted wrenches. Yeah, rust. Yeah. Slabs of leather. 
Yeah, leather Last scraps. Leather, Squares uh, of just random leather. Guarantee the leather scrap bikes guys. That have seen uh, the ass end of a baseball bat, no doubt. <laughs> 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 Mufflers for like a 92 Civic. <laughs> yeah, there was one muffler that, there that was like really specific. It was like 92 Civic. Yeah. I was like, why wouldn't you just write muffler on it? There were these two old guys that were selling a bunch of knives and belt buckles and stuff, and they had like the nice clear cases and the cases up and everything. Yeah. But they made absolutely no effort to arrange it in any kind of attractive manner. They knife just, like, pile. <laughs> Here's a pile of knives. A uh, pile of knives and belt buckles. Whatever you need to be a redneck today. Alarming amount of, like, you know, video games for, like, Super Nintendo, yeah. Nintendo. Alarming is a weird word. And let me let, let like, me say this. Charming. It's like a Dreamcast. It's like, yeah. really? Like, Dreamcast? Can we talk about how great the Dreamcast was for 15 seconds? We can. Was yeah. Ready? Ready? Go. Oh, my God, the Dreamcast was just way ahead of its time. Its controller Super. was really unique, and a lot of the games that were coming out for it were pretty great. They just, Sega has bad timing, which is why they canceled their hardware division and only make software, which is why it's so weird to see Sonic the Hedgehog on the Nintendo Ding. system now. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. That was a perfect description <laughs> of Sega Dreamcast. It was. Se Sega Dreamcast was oh, cool. That yeah. was cool as hell, yeah. man. Uh, I did buy a video game when I was there. I was wrong about the, the fact that Star Fox was on uh, Super Nintendo, so I brought, bought it for my brother, ate my words a little bit. I paid $10 Hashtag for a Super Nintendo game. Did he play it, though? Did he play it? <laughs> yeah. I I texted he's been him. playing it since. I like, texted my brother because, I, you know, I gave him my Super Nintendo because he doesn't have cable or anything. He's bored. And... You know, we talk very sporadically. He's not a big phone person. I was like, how is Star Fox? Confused by it. He texted me back, Star Fox is good. <laughs> so. And all was well. Star yeah. Fox is good. I was like, I guess we don't have to talk for a week. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like I've got everything good, good with you. He'll, he'll text like a week later and be like, I beat it. <laughs> like, yeah, that's probably what it's going to be. The do. frog died. What do I do? Yeah. Um, Hold me. So what was your what was your favorite part of of uh, Seven Mile Fair, Jason? Really, just like <laughs> walking around the like the really labyrinthine hallways and aisles of it. Like you get lost. So oh, these quickly. guys were lost. They were lost. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, was I there was there was moments of panic that I'd have. Like I came out of the bathroom, like where are these guys? Where it's going on? Where are they? Where I don't know how to. I don't even know the language. We called each on. other like three times yeah. while we were together yeah. at Seven Mile Fair. We were only like five feet away from each other. We were. Too. Oh, let's talk about the masseuse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really crafty massage. Oh, can I say this? Okay, so Jason and Eric both got hustled into getting a massage. Hustled right? is the right word. Because they're like, oh, free massage. And like, they have one person who's a wrangler to get you into the chair to give him a, to get a massage. And when you know it, the wrangler is a super cute Asian girl. <laughs> and both Weird. of these guys are like, oh yeah, I'll take a massage. Free so sample. She puts you down in the chair and then she leaves and her like grandmother <laughs> comes out and is like elbowing you guys, which yeah. I thought was hilarious. She was terrible. And then there's nothing more awkward than, yeah, getting up after two minutes it's like okay so here all price uh twelve dollars for ten minutes you want more uh no ten no. minutes ten minutes in that chair and you know they're just spraying it down with like water they're like all right let's put somebody else's face <laughs> she, in this. like obviously she used to be very good at her job but right now to press any harder than she was would cause her immense pain and her daughter's she hold, needed holding holding the leave <laughs> yeah and when I, to, for me like her tone changed like dramatically like and it was like free massage and all of a sudden she's like Oh, only ten dollars. It's like I'll give you the discount. And it was like then her, it got really soft. And now she was like, the she was discount. trying really hard for me to like stay there to give her ten bucks for ten, like, for what ten minutes? I was, yeah. I was avoiding going. I could do this better than you can myself. <laughs> yeah, they sell back scratchers right around the corner. <laughs> Out of alligator hands. Remember yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, and then I forgot my sunglasses there because I had to take my sunglasses off. You know? Yeah. So yeah. Then, so I wasn't lying when I said. I'll probably come back. So I wasn't lying. I came back for my Because sunglasses. you left your sunglasses there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my levels are a little hot. I'm a little hot. But you guys are good. You are a little hot today. Oh, thank you. Some with your hair. So yeah. the, the massage lady was good. Uh, Eric trying to buy a chicken was funny. Uh, the impending rain for the outside sales. Yeah. And and that's not what the word outside sales means. But like <laughs> they're literally selling their home and garden <laughs> implements like out, out of doors in the out of doors. As I like to say, um, and Third rain time. was coming, right? Like, and it was the biggest topic of conversation amongst all of the yeah. people who were running there. They're like, "When's this rain gonna get here? Did you get it? Rain's like rain. on the way. Look at those clouds. <coughs> here comes moisture." But they were like, the, I, "I saw a woman like the sky put, is very moist, pulling a tarp out. Right? She's pulling a tarp out to to." save the, you know, 1994 PC games that she's got there. 
I'm like n- these these are collectors items. They're not they don't they're not functioning. Like a little rain probably won't hurt Madden 94 on PC. It's going to be okay. He wants to cover up the floppy disk of Ultima. <laughs> Even I don't get that. Even I don't get uh, that. Very, very mind-numbing RPG. Of the you should have said Quake. Right? Oh, hey, Quake. Or yeah, uh, yeah right. That's that's a piece. Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem. Okay, yeah, that's, that's the Duke. The original Oregon Trail. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, is where any... in the world is Carmen uh, Sandiego? Uh, yes. Did Best you play ever. Math what Blaster? Math Blaster. I was gonna say Math, Math Blaster. Blaster was yeah. so fun. Yeah, the was. music for Math Blaster. I would just turn that on and jam out to the music. I'm a loser. That was what I'm saying. I'm a big loser. If it makes you feel any better, I am. Um... Can I get that on CD, you guys? <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, two you're thumbs up. What's yeah, up? two thumbs up. Entertainment. One of the one of the Walker buys gave us the double thumbs up, which in my book generally means approval. Yes. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. When I was young, Good I got for into. And Ebert. <laughs> Uh, I got into electronic music because Killer Instinct. Remember the Mortal Kombat? How they turned it into like a techno remix forever. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 But before that, Killer Instinct was this arcade game. Yeah, it? yeah, yep. For the, they released it for the Super Nintendo when it came with the CD that had all these. Electronic, it came with a CD. Yeah, it had all these electronic remixes of like all the characters' level music, and then somebody rapping maybe or like. But it was all like really bad versions of a lot of different genres, and I'm like, well, this is terrible. But where can I find good versions of it? You were hooked at that point. Yeah, and then Mortal Kombat came out. I was like, why do you keep combining all of my favorite things? (laughs) (laughs) So as a kid, you were into techno music and uh, fighting games? Yes, very much so. I was into, like, jungle techno. That's, like, immediately putting yourself in a space where you cannot relate to girls. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like your first date, you're like, "Oh, what are you into?" And she's like, "Oh, you know, I really, you know, I play soccer, and uh, I really like Dawson's Creek." And you're like, "Well, this is gonna blow your mind." Uh-huh. Street Fighter and The Prodigy. <laughs> so we gotta get it let's, on. Yeah, let's go get the fat of the land <laughs> all over us. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so Seven Mile Fair, I totally go check. If you live in Milwaukee, <laughs> you've never been. If you live in southeastern Wisconsin, you've never been. It's a lot of fun. Like it, it's stupid, but it is fun. My it, favorite. Anybody running a, a, a Latin-themed karaoke night, that is your Narnia. You need to go there. Yeah. yeah. My favorite p- part was when Ryan bought me the Olo shirt. It was definitely. Yep, I bought Eric a shirt that said Yolo. I liked like. Okay, first of all, if you're gonna buy food at uh, at. Seven Mile Fair, do it at your own risk. Yeah. Like, that is a thing. Yeah, how was the corn dog, Jason? The corn dog was very, um, it very much tasted like I waited for 10 minutes to get it. That's good. You have to cook a corn dog thoroughly. Yeah. There's no, there's no two ways about it, you guys. You're talking icy cold center. I'm bringing that thing right back, getting my $2 back. I will tell you that it burned my mouth. That's so that's that was, the sign of a good corn dog. Yeah, exactly. And we're gonna be talking a lot of corn dogs when Sean Shelnut comes on. Yeah, he's got a few things corn he dog wants to say. Yeah, right. Um, Mini the, corn dogs. He, well, his nickname in uh, high school was uh, corn dog. <laughs> so that was, but it had to do with only his, in the locker room. His complexion uh, was <laughs> that of a corn dog. <laughs> no, my favorite part of the day was when. So there are a lot of uh, little stands where they sell Spanish or. L- Latino music um, because apparently you they don't sell that in stores yeah. <laughs> or on mp3 yeah. and my favorite part of the day was when this one stand that was selling ranchero music was, had a guy up there who wanted to test the CDs out that he was buying so they put on one CD and they played it and they played it for like five seconds and then they stopped it and they put in another CD and it, of ranchero music and they kept doing this I was like Five second splits of Ranchero music is actually all I need. Yeah. Like, I don't need, like, okay, that one sounds pretty good. Next track. Let's... Was that outside? Yes. That and they was... all sounded the same. They all sounded exactly the same. I think he was testing the speakers is what he was doing. He was trying to find some computer speakers that were, like, pretty big. So they were testing. He just kept switching the song on the computer. But he wanted to make sure that, like, the, the Ranchero music that he was going to be playing in his ride was, like, yeah. it could handle the full tilt. <laughs> like, he was, like... The sheer awesome raw power. Of He's like, because some of it's, you know, a lot, it's accordion heavy, so I want to make sure <laughs> that I got the treble worked out. But, you know, when I get that, I also want that to sound good. So, uh, these CDs with naked women on them yeah. uh, that don't with have women. Cowboys, on. either very tough looking cowboys or boobs. Yeah, that was how Ranchero music yeah. is sold. Was? I mean, is. That is how a it is. Of, it's either a lot of clothes or very, very few clothes. Yeah. Or mustaches, one yeah. of the two. There's mustaches on everything. 
And then, and Even then the we, nipples. And then we played the the game where you try to hit the bell with hitting the hammer on the thing. Yeah. You know, the strength thing. All very. I sad. hit the bell, and then you guys uh, got up and could not hit the bell. Is no, that correct? No, I, I think I missed the target completely. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happened. No, no actually, wait, I was the I weakest. Think what actually thing. happened was that Ryan got the lowest score. And then uh, me and Eric dominated. Don't poke holes in the reality that I'm drawing up here. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, 9-11 uh, was an inside job, but... <laughs> <laughs> that has nothing to do with hitting something with a hammer. Yeah, we had to go to Seven Mile Fair to figure out we're all, like, comics who are pretty weak. Like, you yeah. know, like, that's a... You What's know, better was that we got an audience, because we were so scrawny and looked like... Our in like, inability was so strong and obvious that we got an audience around yeah, us to watch us watching, fail. Yeah. yeah, that was kind Even of as we, as after Look at these we guys. failed. They're never going to hit the bell, like... They created like a gauntlet walk of shame. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like these old like Latin women were just like, oh, come over here. Like, you know, like they're going to hit it. <laughs> and then I was like, I, I, even if I hit the bell, it's not like these Latin women are going to be like, he is a real man. <laughs> like, it was never going to happen. <laughs> uh, but I, I think it was really funny. Going to a place like that where it's a swap meet. Burn down a Taco Bell for that. Where they sell everything. Like, they sell everything at Seven Mile Fair. And we are such nerdy, like, products of the Gen X, Gen Y that we call back. That we are, like, fascinated by baseball cards and Super Nintendo games. Yeah. But like, we that. spent, like, 30 minutes looking at baseball cards yeah. and I Super Nintendo I almost bought, games. like, a upper deck pack of, uh, like, 1991 baseball cards. For no reason. But, like, they've been awesome. I almost bought Spider-Man number one from back in, like, 93. <laughs> like Spider-Man reboot number one. It was, like, five bucks, but why? What would I do with it? I would read it, and then it would throw it on my floor. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I would just put all those baseball cards in my spokes. I don't value things. Yeah, you would. Uh, I would save them and label them and put them in a binder. No, that's never going to happen. Like, I was never organized Again. enough to actually collect baseball cards. Yeah, exactly. I collected Magic the Gathering cards like a champ. Yeah? Let me tell you. And that if you're hearing that now, that's a lie, and that didn't happen. <laughs> well, I just thought, not, what if they had, like, a Magic the Gathering with baseball cards where it was like, oh, look at me, I got Barry Bonds. He's, like, plus five in steroids. <laughs> <laughs> they did, actually. There was a... there Shameless was a the trying a premise. Uh, that's good. There was a football... <laughs> card, uh, I guess you'd call them role-playing games. Really? Yep, there was a football one called, like, Gridiron. Um, it was, it, I played it. It was dumb. Like, was it dumb, though? Like, or was it awesome? It was awesome. Okay, okay. okay. that's what awesome. I'm looking for, then. <laughs> but, like, that, it was such a small set of cards that, like, there was a couple of them that if you had that card, it was, like, no question that you were gonna win, you know? Like the Barry Sanders? I think it was called Gridiron. Uh, Steve, see if you can find the football... Uh, role-playing card game. Magic I mean, like, Gathering NFL. Because, like, I would get into that if there was, like, a baseball, like... It was, like, cartoonish. It was, like, it was like a comic book, kind of. The, the, like, the actual cards, you know. Like, they weren't actual players. You couldn't, like, cast a spell. Like, you know, like, I got the big unit, so now, like, your players can't hit for six innings. Like, you know what I mean? Like, well, I mean... Quarters. There's six quarters, right? Uh, this is baseball. I'm talking baseball. You're talking baseball? I can't the big unit isn't a football player. Come on, I can't even, me here. I can't even talk to you. That sounds like the big unit. Jay Buhner, the Mariners, ninety. The oh. big unit was not Jay Buhner. Get less attracted to you every time I listen. The to big you talk. unit is Randy Johnson. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but they were on the Mariners at the same time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day. Anyways, this has been 1990s I just Seattle the, Mariners. Talk. I just won, yeah. I just won the fantasy baseball game. I just won it. You know, you, you know won. what game I didn't want to. Oh, you're just celebrating, having a good time. So. Uh, you said you just won with that. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, this. So we yeah, should I mean. let's wrap up our seven mile fair talk. Do you guys have anything else you want to say about seven mile fair? I YOLO. Had a good time. YOLO. Yeah, YOLO. <laughs> YOLO. I, mean, I like how we've just managed to like rationalize every awful behavior choice we make by just going YOLO. Like I burn down a Taco Bell and like steal a baby and throw it off of a cliff. YOLO. And I was like, why did you do that? YOLO, no. mofo. I want to get buried in my YOLO shirt. <laughs> it's a possibility. Nah. <laughs> Buried you know, alive. Yeah, you definitely have to kill yourself while in a YOLO shirt. <laughs> that that seems counterintuitive. <laughs> <laughs> you only That's the once. point. <laughs> so, uh... Because you can't fit you my, So there's listeners out there shirt. that don't know what YOLO means, right? <laughs> like, I think there's a barrier. I think anyone our age would think that the, what we're talking about is a, a shameless... Yeah, hate. ...attempt hate to it. relate to youth culture. Which it is. Yeah, right, exactly. Hey, I... We went to a hot topic today, right? Right? That right? doesn't. Yeah, okay, see, that's you. See Justin Bieber on the on the new Rolling Stone, right? You guys. So explain what YOLO Katie is. Katy Perry. Yeah. 3D. Oh, anyway, sorry. Me, y YOLO. It, it's it's more like a spiritual thing. It's more like a. Shut up. You know. No, it's not. 
No, keep keep going. No, go sorry, ahead, I interrupted go ahead. you. I, that's that was rude of me. You explain it. Yes, and yes, and um, it is a cult, and yes, and I am in it. Um, I'm getting a yellow tattoo. I tell you that. What you no, but what is no people? There get are people who don't know these. what. There are people that don't know what that means. So explain what YOLO means. YOLO is an acronym. It means you only live once. And that was five minutes of me trying to get Eric to say that. You guys didn't understand what I was trying to get at. Why would we give you what you? Want? I thought everybody already knew. Radio. I thought everybody. Well, like my mom's probably listening. She doesn't know what that means, <laughs> right? We gotta think about. No, that. your mom doesn't need to know what it means because she lives it. That's right. She does. I saw a thing where Yolo. it was like the YOLO Yoda, and it's like only once you live. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he says everything backwards. Is that stupid? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> My mom, my mom would have like if they had a shirt that said YOLO on it, but it had like sparkly uh, Chardonnay glasses on it. She'd buy that. <laughs> she would wear that. Or that like, would happen. I want to get like a, some, some like a Rolos, Precious Moments some Yolo. Rolos, yeah. Rolo. Andy. Can I get a YOLO angel from Precious Moments? Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised. You know, you say angels, and I don't know why it makes me think of this, but like, why were there no like chicken soup for the teenage soul books that I could have bought at Seven Mile Fair? Yeah. Because everyone they're they're in a reading. Uh, Is it reading? <laughs> Is that why? <laughs> there weren't a lot of books for sale. That's definitely something that you, I know you bring to my attention. I didn't think about that when I was there, but now that I'm thinking about it, there were like no literally books no, for sale. Books. no books. No yeah. books. A lot of DVDs. Maybe like some old a lot of VHS Britannicas, maybe. But uh, I didn't see any. No. YOLO. I mean, what are you going to read a book, right? <laughs> YOLO. Yeah. You only read too short. once. Yeah, life's too short to read books. Are you I kidding me? <laughs> um, so we had, a, we had the radio social. Uh, yeah. was on Sunday. Uh, that was just a chance for us to get to meet um, some of the folks who run radio shows here at riverrestradio.com. I thought that was uh, pretty cool. Eric and I stopped by. Uh, you didn't make it, right? I did and not make it. Steve was also there, but we got to meet uh, We got to meet the guys, and just to give a few shout-outs to some other shows, if you haven't checked them out, uh, this is your chance to maybe go check out some of the shows. Stone Soup is the show that's after us, but uh, there's a live radio drama uh, group that's called Onion Breath Radio Theater, and I think that, that it sounded really cool. So that sounds rad. check that out on riverrestradio.com. I think that they are earlier in the day on Tuesdays, um, but I I sort of offered us to be on that program. So <coughs> once we have any more information about that, we'll let you know. We'll, uh, cool. It'd be fun to. I've never really done acting since I was in like high school, so you'd probably be great at it. I know that you've done some acting, so I think maybe it'll be fun. It would be fun yeah. to like get out there and try that. Yeah, that would be, be fun. Um, and we also signed up for something on Center Street Days where we're going to do comedy in a teepee. So <laughs> that is going to be awesome. Occupy Comedy. Sweet. Occupy Comedy. Well, I didn't know this, but I think that Zob is the, is the, I guess, I don't even know if, can Occupy people own things? But I think he's the, like, the, the keeper of the teepee. Yeah. So is that right? I don't know if Are I'm saying that right. Are we going to perform in that TV that was at Yeah, that TV is going to be at Center Street, and then we're going to have live broadcast of Riverwest Radio up until like seven o'clock. So honestly, all I have to do to get you guys to sign something is put it in your face. No, no, like put it in a teepee. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you put it. It in has a to be a nice pen. It has to be a nice pen. If it's like some bic, I'm gonna be like, I don't know. But if it's like a really nice pen, I'll be like, wow, this writes beautiful. What else does do it you write? Need to sign? Like, does it write on buckskin? Oh, I'll sign this teepee. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, it's got a quill and you dip it in ink. Are you kidding me? Comedy in a teepee sounds answer. fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that that's uh, what day is that? That the eighth? Center Street days. Uh, September eighth, I believe. And then uh, September twenty eighth, there's going to be a night out for uh, the radio station as a, a little bit of a fundraiser. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to be hosting that. I'm going to MC that, and some of these guys are going to do comedy at that yeah. as well. So I think that that's going to be a lot of fun. You listen to me on this show, so you might as well come out and see that. Yeah. And I, I will say at the social, whoever made the avocado. It was really good. And so much garlic. It was really spicy. Yeah, so much garlic. I was just like, I almost fell over. I was like, oh my god. I love that. Like, I know that was affiliated with the radio station, but the fact that you're, you're you you said like whoever made that, like oh whoever made that uh, guacamole I ate three days ago, it was a little spicy. <laughs> like, there's no chance that that guy's listening. No, there could be. Hey, I had a grilled oh, cheese goodness. overdone. I think his show. I think his show is called like something like Who Let This Guy on the Air or something like that. It's uh. I'm like Wednesdays. Okay. I met him and he's cool. They should have a big schedule. Oh, it's outside. It faces the other way. That's why I can't yeah. reference it. But that, it was really cool to meet some of the other folks that are doing radio shows. And <laughs> I know that I, I think that our show is unique um, in that we're talking about comedy. We're, we're comics and so we're bringing our perspective to, to the airways. But um, I, I think our that. Dynamically superior uh, opinions about everything. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, other. 
it's nice to share the airwaves with people that maybe have opinions that aren't as good as ours, but... I think it's really cool that that we share the airways with no. uh, a lot of other like really cool people who have. I'm really proud of this, not only our show but like the whole station. I think yeah, it's, it's it definitely got quite a buzz, and it's definitely reaching out to people outside of the neighborhood. Like we're mm-hmm. big in the city now. This yeah, absolutely, is fantastic. So thank you, Zav. Give yeah, and uh, that's that's a really great like like that's exactly what I what I feel as well. I mean, like there's no reason that anybody within the station has been any problem like we've all supported each other so I think oh, that's yeah. awesome. This uh, is the, the fact that we're here is so shocking. Like I love that we were just working Well, some of us were on time even. Fell up. <laughs> But it, it really defines River West. <laughs> it really defines like River West. It's just far as like you know, like people that just like are cool and like come together for yeah. Why not? Cool cool TP. I'm glad we definitely gave uh, uh, Ryan Mason's ego a platform. Yeah. That's. Did it need one? Or no, was, was the whole say, world on stage? Really. Just he's got, need one. He's got a lectern. You should see I've it in the bedroom. Box, and what do you've got? A comfy couch. Yeah. Comfy That's couch. what we all speak from. Yes. Yes, I feel like you speak from like a leaned back like chair, a hammock, or like a director's a chair. That's what it is. A director's like, legs chair. Legs crossed, yeah. director's chair. <laughs> like we're we're like. No, we're... not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Did we have any tweets, Eric? I saw you looking at your phone. Were you just checking out? I was just Facebooking. No, uh, good thing you asked because your mom said. So what is YOLO? <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Yeah, But she said she would buy a shirt, and she says that you collected all sorts of cards growing up. Yes, so I did. Tell us more about that. Yes, I did, Mother. Thank you very much. <laughs> I collected. Uh, I am a, I was a, uh, like a dweeby eighth grader type of guy, and I collected Magic the Gathering cards, baseball cards, basketball cards, mostly Charles Barkley. Yeah. Almost, almost exclusively Charles Barkley. Um, I collected Gridiron was the football game. Sure. Uh, Star Wars the game when that was a when that was a game that was collectible. Um, Pog, that game Pogs? is you very like difficult. A, yep. You Pogs. Like a Pog guy. I collected Pogs. The bonkers at a Pogs. Yeah, me too. I never played. Like now, I don't dumb get, game. I like collecting dumb. them more. I had a bunch of really awesome slammers. Like the slammers to me yeah, were art. Yeah. I love those. Let's things. talk Pogs, you guys. Yeah, yeah it's not it. on the list. But let's talk let's Pogs. Let's do some Pogs. Let me yeah. just put this out there, okay? Poll for our Twitter followers. Metal slammers or rubber slammers? Jason, you want to lead this one off? Metal slammers Without all the way. Without a doubt, metal. I had a, I oh. had a Mortal Kombat one. Speaking of Mortal Kombat, I had one It was like carved. The dragon was carved into it. I randomly got it for like three bucks from a friend of mine. It was beautiful. And the game itself, I hated the oh, game Oh, it's itself. so dumb. Yeah, the It doesn't even make sense, yeah. really. It's kind of like marbles. Yeah. yeah. If I, marbles I, were flat. I remember my mom. Jenga marbles. <laughs> like Jenga and marbles had a, like a mutant baby. My mom bought me. She would buy us pogs, you know, because... A, they were they were cheap and yeah, it was like fun to get cents. things, you know, and and B because she's an awesome mom, and uh, but she bought shout us, out to Debbie. One year she bought us like, like, went out and wanted to surprise us with like cool pogs or nice pogs, you know. But like, there's not there's like a level for pog like they level off. Like yeah. it's not like you get up to you know the like, the 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 Russian egg. Pog, you know, like there isn't like it doesn't go that like high a up. a pog that James Bond has yeah, to steal. Yeah, there was there's still circles news. of cardboard. Like at the end of the day, but she bought at, us like Michael Jordan pogs. Oh, cool. Ooh, so yeah. we were like, oh, cool. And had, then we're like, we're we're supposed to hit these with a metal <laughs> thing. Like we're supposed what? to hit these with a stapler. Like yeah. this doesn't make sense. I uh, I was at Value Village like a year ago, and they, there was this a huge. I didn't pog buy sale? of course because they were worthless. But like this yeah. huge binder. What if they pogs. weren't? <laughs> What if they were worth something? What if you got home and you'd eBayed it just to check, and they're like, "These half pogs are a half a million bucks." Yeah. <laughs> I had some scratch and sniff pogs. Also, ultimately useless. Yeah. <laughs> can you? Do you think you can still custom make pogs? Because I would love to have some cok pogs. Some pogs. You could easily make. We could make it. We should make a slammer. We should start. We should have a cock. Fuck. Uh, 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 I didn't say it. I didn't finish it. I said right there. <laughs> okay. All right. You can put it in. You're on notice. But no, I uh, I, I had a, a Packer, I had a Green Bay Packer metal slammer with like, it was like uh, like a saw blade, and I got in trouble because I brought it to school one day, and I was like, let's play plugs too, and like, you can't bring this metal it's saw blade. Kni- it's just a knife. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's my slammer. It's my pog slammer. Yeah, it's a knife. <laughs> it's a gun. Yeah, I was going to throw a it gun. at somebody. I but... use, my pog is also a gun, so. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Like when Indiana Jones, when that guy swings his sword at him and then he turns around and shoots him. Like somebody yeah. brings this huge elaborate case full of all of these pogs and he stacks them all up and he's like, your play, 
You just pull out a gun. <laughs> shooting pogs. I think shooting pogs might be the dumbest thing. Like we could possibly like shooting pogs in a barrel. I like I like the idea that like we, this show has brought you the the visual of a man shooting pogs. Like it's we very managed, 90s. We haven't managed to bore you into like a, a yeah. restful slumber yet. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we just play some Sarah McLaughlin to take us out now? I feel like uh y- you know the college kids these these days, right? right? College kids these days. They're, they're all born in the 90s, right? So, like, do college, like, a college freshman, would they even know what a pog is? What do you I don't think? think so. What's the over-under on that? Born well, in- I don't think any of them know, I have absolutely any clue. Yeah, you hear that, college kids? Culture. You hear that? Yeah. You don't know nothing about pogs. Yeah. You don't know nothing. Yeah, because, we don't know nothing about YOLO. Yeah, we don't know anything about that or, you know, dubstep. But I would, if we want to bridge this gap, we're going to throw a dubstep and pogs party. Yeah. yeah Everybody's boy. invited. Hey, <laughs> YOLO, right? YOLO. Um, I think it's a good enough time for us to take a, a short pause there after we a just riveted the airways with that pog talk. Yeah. Um, so, Pog I'm, Talk. I'm going to take this time to... Pog Talk. <laughs> we are completely changing the name of the show to Pog Talk with Mason. I think I'm going to switch switch it up here and play some uh, a song by uh, the... Uh, 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 not by the band that Sarandi donated. So that, Leaves. So that we can play that when he gets back. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to play something by the Fatty Acids. This song, in honor of Eric's uh, chicken buying uh, experience, this song is called Feathers, Beaks, and Gills. Yeah. So we'll be right back with the Killer Radio Show. Please give us a call at 414-935-2951 or send us a tweet at Cast of Killers, hashtag Killer Radio.
Those were the uh, uh, the soft tones of the fatty acids, as well as some more rocking stuff too. They've they've got it all, folks. They've got it all. Friends of the show, fatty acids. You're listening to the Killer Radio Show on RiverWestRadio.com. I'm Ryan Mason with Jason Hillman. We're actually joined right now by one of my favorite comics locally. Uh, local, and I and I say locally not because. There are other comics, not locally, that I like more than this person. It's just that it's a different thing when you're talking about comics uh, across the the uh, international uh, boundaries. And I, I don't want to say that this person doesn't doesn't have that level of integrity and, and comic prowess because he does. Very funny. I just think that you know I should preface by saying that. But I'd like to welcome Mr. Sean Shelnut. Hello, everybody. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Right, like what just prefaced really hard right there. I don't know why I did that. Uh, welcome to the show, Sean. Thank you for having me. How you doing? I'm doing very well. Reptile. Good How to have you. Thank you. Um, Sean Shelna is a member of the Cast of Killers, the most recent member of the Cast of Killers, yeah, actually, brand right? Yeah, spanking new. He uh, recently was unhooked from the machine and then slid naked down then a slide right and picked in. up by a giant ship. Yeah, and we're happy to have him. Yeah. Sean's... Sean's different than a lot of the, the comics that we have, too. He's funny, uh, funny uh, which is a big <laughs> thing. But I, why don't you tell a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, I don't even know where to start, but I guess I could go with... Beginning. Uh, I'm a combat veteran, and uh, I spent uh, time in the military. I signed up right after 9-11. Uh, I got out in 2005. I did some time in Iraq and came back, did the school thing, and... I don't know, my whole life I've just been wanting to make people laugh, and I, now I finally said, hey, you know what, these cast of killer guys are pretty funny. What do I got to do to get in this? And, I'm just and been, he showed up with a gun, and uh, the yeah, rest I'm is I'm sorry history. about that still, you guys. No, I mean, don't be. It's yeah. totally fine. Yeah, I just really wanted to get on stage. I don't yeah. know why you shot our MC, but whatever. But what, did you shot an MC? Because that could be, that's a gun, right, an MC? I don't know. Um, MC5? No, that's no, a band. That, MC5. MP5. Yeah. Kick out the jams. <laughs> Is that what I'm thinking of? <laughs> we gotta kick them out. Is that MC5? I don't remember, but keep right, on. Either rocking. way, it's a Rage <laughs> Against the Machine song. If I ever too. make a gun, I'll make it an MC5 just for you. Cool. All right, right on. MC5. Can you make that out of a toy airplane? Steve, yes. link MC5's Kick Out the Jams to somewhere. I think that's MC5. I don't know. That's a punk band. Anyway. Or an MC5 song that isn't the incorrect one that Ryan quoted. Kick Out the Jams? You're not familiar with Kick Kick out the jams. Kick out the jams. We gotta kick them out. Vintage 1990s Pog Mill Cap Maker. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, oh, we can get one of those? Yeah, officially so, Pog licensed. You know what, Sean? We would love to talk to you, but some pressing information about Pogs has come up. So. I totally understand if it's about <laughs> Pogs. What are your thoughts on I mean, Pogs? that's what you were fighting for, right? Was the freedom for Pog <laughs> production. Fight for your right to Pog. Yeah, I definitely was biased <laughs> to the metal Pog. You know, because it's sturdier and yeah. more damage. and It's a know. good pog. It's a good thing you know? to throw at your mom. Yeah. Well, I never threw that at my mom. So you were, uh, you're, you're a comic who came to the game la uh, later, like you are 29. Yep. And you started doing comedy when you were 29, right? Yeah, I'm 30 now, actually. You're 30 now. I am, oh, big brother. 3 -oh. So what what was that like coming, like your first time on stage? Was it pretty nervy for you? Or like um, coming from the experience of, of combat, like were you even nervous? No, it was crazy. It was uh, it was definitely nervous in a different way. Um, <laughs> like not, not that you were going to get killed. <laughs> right, I wasn't worried about getting shot. Um, <laughs> I was uh, more concerned with taking shots before. Rim shots. Well, I don't know about rim shots. Uh, giving, yes. <laughs> taking, no. Uh, um, not rim jobs, rim shots. Rim shots, like. Yeah, no, that's what. Uh, yeah, I okay. give rim. I, yeah, when you like, if Just you were to tell a, if we should say that joke, he travels uh, with a one-man band outfit like Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. Yeah. When he's on stage. Yeah, I carry some symbols around, and I like to do the rim shot. That's what I meant, Jason. Yeah. What was that? Hey, what was thanks this? for turning that into something it wasn't. What was the song for Mary Poppins that he th sang? 
Every day is a holly jolly day with you, Mary. Is that that was that one? No spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. Wow, that's, that's really good. That was really good. Thanks. Uh, I don't even know if that's the right movie. That but is the right sure movie. Yeah. Pretty sure it is. Yeah, spoonful of sugar. Pretty sure it's Mary Poppins. Right. Test me. Any question about Mary Poppins? <laughs> How tall is she? Practically perfect in every way. Yeah, I know that. That is the exact mathematical height too. That's how tall she is. Yeah. Uh, so you're. What was? What did you do like before uh, all that? What did you do before the army? Before that, all that that stuff. All right, this is gonna shock you, but believe it or not, I actually uh, was uh, training to be an instructor for taekwondo, and uh, I was really. I was an instructor's assistant for J.K. Lee's taekwondo, and. I, uh, that was that was my p intended path in life, and then 9/11 happened, and I said, "Oh, got to do something else." Better take so. these kicks to the street. Yeah, but I was a big Sand martial street. arts Strange enthusiast. Streets. Yeah. Yeah. So you were, you were stationed overseas in Fallujah, uh, in Iraq, right? Yeah, that's correct. And how long were you stationed overseas? A uh, total of 13 months. Yeah. Did uh, six in Fallujah and then six in Abu Nia. I don't know where that is. I don't even really know either. <laughs> I mean, it's just like <laughs> freedom doesn't know, have man. boundaries. I don't know. Yeah, like, what is, like freedom isn't on the map. What is Iraq comparable to as a state? Like, how big would it be? Like Georgia or like Rhode Texas? Island? I don't even know. No, I, I mean, Iraq. no, it's like a See, medium-sized state, I think. Like Nevada, maybe. That's a big state. How big is Iraq compared to states? Yeah, look that up. Yeah, hey, well, I just was over there. I, they didn't ask me how big it was before I had to go over. It wasn't a. Wasn't does any, a who does ask you how big it is? That's what I want to know. Uh, you know what? I think you guys might be the first people to ask me how big is Iraq. <laughs> how big is it? Like that's right. the question we ask. You get back. Right. Over. That was the. How big was it? Was it right. big? <laughs> yeah. Not. Uh, not the old. Oh, but it was hot there. Like, yeah, is that, that what people yeah, ask? That's, yeah, that's number one. Like, yeah, you know, most deserts, like when you learn in like third or fourth grade about climate, yes, they like, are yeah, hot. it's, yeah, it's consistent hot. with your learnings from long Suppose time ago. Suppose it didn't rain much. Yeah, you're, uh, man, you know, you're, uh, what are, what are the top third spheres grade, or whatever? Yeah, yeah. yeah top topography. Sure. Yeah. Did you, uh, so I, I like talking to Sean about uh, some of those things because I don't know a lot of people who are combat veterans and uh, comics. I think it's interesting. We were talking about uh, MREs the other day, about like oh, the yeah. food overseas. Like, wh <laughs> what's it like, like, coming back and knowing that like people can go to a store and get whatever food they want but when you're over there you have a choice of you said it was a box and you had yeah. like 20 things yeah there was uh two boxes uh, and they had 12 different meals inside so a total of 24 different choices and uh we had that for about uh, two and a half months before we started getting anything different and then we just there was a point where we got two mres a day and that was it and uh i can tell you right now that Number 15 used to be the beef frankfurter, and I don't know why they got rid of that, because that was the best one, hands down. That was the best one. Oh, what was the worst it one? was the worst one? Oh, it was frankfurter. like chicken carbonara, <laughs> like just, I think it was chicken carbonara or something like that. It was like chicken cardboard. That seems cardboard, like hard to replicate in a just, desert meal. <laughs> yeah, in a, yeah, in a single serving, like pinch pack, and then it gets hot. Type of thing. Where, dude, don't. Where's my filet mignon MRE? Right, because <laughs> you just like twist them or something, and they they like explode with hotness, right? No, there's a little uh, pouch that reacts to water. Yeah, girls got. And, oh, okay. Uh, there's there's a thing in there, and you slide the sleeve of whatever like meatloaf and gravy or whatever into the into this pouch, and then you pour some water in, and it reacts, and it gets really really hot. Really like, you tasty. Could burn your, you could burn yourself on your uh, MRE yeah. heat pack. How many how many uh, how many people are veterans of the war that come home with just burns from their MRE, <laughs> MRE burn like that's their their like battle scar it's like an MRE burn he's a hero he was trying to eat some lasagna on downtime <laughs> like born on the 4th of July he just comes home he's in a wheelchair because he burned his legs you know there's MRE. like you know there's like one veteran out there who's like like he got sand in his teeth like that was like the, <laughs> oh, that happened all the time like that was the one thing though like the one like other people have faced much serious content much and, more dire things yeah, yeah and like there's one guy who's like everything was pretty normal and then I got sand in my teeth it was terrible it was just terrible <laughs> yeah that would be 
<laughs> I guess you can't complain about things when you're over. Like you can't complain about everything, or else. No, you and uh, you know when I was over, it. when I was over, uh, we got a we had a satellite phone. We got ten minutes a week. That was it. We didn't have showers for the first two and a half months. I mean, oh, it geez. was no internet, no can't shower and you sand. know regular no phones, and yeah, and you know I'd call people and like I didn't really care about what was happening. And I like I got ten minutes and that was it. And you're then, like, what? Uh, how'd the Packers do? Was that the first thing you said? Yeah. No, I remember Arnold Schwarzenegger became governor. That's, like, one of the first things I remember, like, hearing. And I was just like, is this for real? Like, is this a real this thing? This is why I'm fighting. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> you know. You're like, the like, war is going to end soon. Yeah. Right. He's coming over. Why can't Schwarzenegger just come over here and deal with this himself? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. He's got to get to the chopper. You know, and there were a lot of choppers over Stick there. Stick around. And there's a ton of choppers. Right. Over for there. the record, I wasn't trying to do his voice. I was just saying the line. So what does an MRE fart smell like? I mean, when you're in the Humvee. Freedom. And some, yeah, like freedom. <laughs> the opposite of freedom. <laughs> it's just bad. It's just <laughs> Um, I mean, it really depends. I mean, if you ate a lot of the B. Frankfurters or if you were, like, the last pick guy, uh, I mean, it really, really depended. They had uh, one meal that had uh, cheese sauce packets and crackers as a side dish. I don't know why I said dish. There were no dishes. But it was just a side thing. And That uh, sounds like two years of not having to do dishes. It was, or it was 13 months of not having to do dishes. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn your mic off while this American hero talks. So people don't have to hear you eat chips, Jason. I'm not a hero. Just no. I'm, just te I'm teasing. Was, you just crush a lot. Yeah, I just <laughs> just did the Iraq thing. <laughs> just the did the Iraq. That's really not yellow, anymore. right? Yellow. <laughs> so you've been doing uh, comedy uh, for uh, about a year. Yeah. Would you say going on? Um, yeah. I like uh, Sean's joke. You do. You tend to do pretty long jokes. I do. Yeah, I like the long form better than the short form. Yeah, and you, you know, do you, is that part of your writing style? Because you seem to, you do a lot of voices, you do a lot of long form jokes, you do a lot of really uh, interesting, interesting work. What, 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 what guides your, uh, your voice on stage, um, or do you still discovering that? I, I think you know. I mean, a lot of it's drawn. Uh on you know real life experience i'd say i mean a lot of comics is, is that's what it is but i've just had these My really crazy right, yeah. <laughs> big surprise uh <laughs> but, but um it's cause you're yeah a lot of a lot of the stuff's just uh, like really you know being being the, the veteran i got that a lot of these stories that are really crazy that you know i can take people for that ride you know uh, in yeah. the imagination and that and getting know, them to laugh about it i mean it's it's really I think it's constructive for people who uh, maybe have been through that. I think it's I think oh, yeah. it's constructive for an audience to know that like Sean is a person. Like he's he laughs. He you know he has right. emotion. Like I think that that's really positive. You don't see that a lot when you when you watch like a country music video where they're flying F-16s through it and <laughs> you know like they're 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 like they're painted as one person. But like <laughs> seeing a comic perform who's also a combat veteran paints that in a different light. It says this person ha has layers. Yeah, I mean, and like you know... An, the, like a funny onion. Like a funny onion. Funny, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, like, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what part of the military you're in, whether you're uh, combat or not, you know, uh, I think people sometimes forget that we're, we're just like everybody else. Like, if you yeah. think of your best friend, there's a version of your best friend that's in the Army, you know? And, yeah. uh, and so, you know, a lot of the stories is just... I mean, it's like adult, uh, like, Boy Scout camp. Yeah. I mean, I mean, when I was at Fort Riley, Kansas, you know, I was there for three years. Well, to be fair, that sounds super gay. <laughs> yeah, and um, it was um, <laughs> very, very much so. And uh, <laughs> sorry, I have a cold. He was choking on your hubris. I, I turned my mic off there to cough. My bad. Um, you know, getting away from that a little bit, uh, we were all in a show together this Friday for uh, at the BBC for the Eleven Eleven Presents eighty eight nine Milwaukee Midwest Comedy Competition. Uh, the three people on the mic right now are are full blown winners: Jason Hillman, Sean Shelna, and myself. And we're competing right now. We're actually this is tough to be in these close quarters with you guys because I know that um, I want nothing more than to beat you. I so. will crush you. <laughs> so you can vote for us on 889.com. Uh, I'm all of us. Shut have, up. All of us has put out stuff on Facebook and we'll put out the voting link on killer radio. 
I will bite at your on the Facebook thing. page. But let's give let's give a second here to each of us <laughs> to give a platform for why should the public vote for you. And and the reason I'm saying this is because you could have come out to see that show. You could have seen us in a comedy show previously. But also apparently you can vote for us having never seen us. So let's yeah. give this opportunity to uh, each one of us to lay out there why should. Why should somebody vote for you? And we should say that the prize for this is to uh, potentially open up for a major headlining act at the Paps Theater or Turner Hall in Milwaukee, which would be obviously a big show for any of us um, here in this room and, and you know amongst a lot of the comics. So you want me to go first? Is that what you're saying, Jason? Is that what this for is? For the people. All right, I'll go first. I'll go first. I'll lay it out there. Um, somebody time me. I'm going to do one minute. We'll each do one minute, okay? You gonna time me? You got it. Okay, I need to set this up. Should I have background music for this? I'm gonna see if I have any John Mellencamp songs on my. Ready? Hold on, I want background. You music. have like NSYNC or something. I want something? layered music. I'm cheating. I'm gonna you have some Backstreet Boys. I want some back music. Um, uh, do you want it that way? Is that what's happening? Okay, I'm gonna do mine to the Beach Boys, California Girls, and I can do this because it's comedy. Ready? Yeah, go. Hey everybody, this is Ryan Mason with the Cast of Killers. You may see my name up in lights someday, but not yet. You can vote for me, though, at 889.com. And the reason you should vote for me to open up for a major headlining act is because I will probably embarrass myself worse than I ever have. This is the opportunity to put me in front of the most people possible. And I'll, I'll say this, I will feel very fat. Uh, I will feel... Uh, uh, very embarrassed for myself prior to there's a possibility there is a mere possibility that I could thrill those people though that I could take them to that next level of existence to bring them closer to to not only myself but to Jesus Christ and God so I want you to vote for me I want you to think about all those people in your life that you don't like and then vote for me in spite of them and, and Sarandi says, and I'll blow you. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? And I'll blow you. Thank you very much. I'm Ryan Mason. Okay. All right. Okay. Everybody gets a minute, too. So that's me. Um, and that's more time, basically, than people got. What do you want? What do you want as your background music? Do you want some, like, New Orleans uh, jazz type of stuff? Do you want really sad music? Do you want DJ Mighty Thor? What do you want? Uh, do you have any Beatles? Nope. Uh, I've got that Killer Instinct soundtrack on my iPod. On my do you really? Actually. Yeah, I do, actually. I, oh, my <laughs> God. I wish we could have that. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm just going to get into it because I'm not the kind of person who needs gimmicks to make their speech more powerful. <laughs> I think that... Uh, wow. That's a dig, first yeah, of all. You don't need... I, well, I, How about I don't the know. honeycombs? Have I the right? Do you want that? What hey, is Ryan, it? Shut up. What does that sound like? What do they sound like? Have I the right to kiss you? You know. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, Let's play that. We'll go with that. Uh, I take back. I'm what giving I just him said. an opportunity off mic, Steve. <laughs> you shut your hole. All right, here we go. Hi, hi everybody. My goodness, the people, the, my my favorite people, which is everybody out there listening right now. Every one of which I love and hold dear and pretend I'm cuddling with when I cuddle with my lonely pillow at night. Uh, my name is Jason Hillman. I am from the Cast of Killers. In fact, I am, am one of the co-founders of the Cast of Killers. I think that it's... Uh, uh, the only reason I want to win is because I really want to give an opportunity for as many people as possible to see me represent everything that I stand for uh, and not only that I stand for but you stand for as the people because I am the people's comic I am doing it so that everyone can have a voice Ex as long as that voice is solely mine so I think that you should vote for me because a vote for me is a vote for yourselves you brilliant beautiful vibrant human beings Huh? And that's it. And, and that was it. That was pretty yeah. good. That was pretty good. All right. Thanks to the honeycombs. And we can do that because we're doing comedy. All right. Don't sue us. The honeycombs. They're dead, right? I think they're all dead. The Maybe. guys who are in the honeycombs. Sure. You know. I, I mean, I would if I was in a case against them, I'd be like, have I the right to play this song? Right? No, that's a joke. about. That's the what you're voting for when you vote for Ryan Mason. Yeah. OK, what do you want? You want like super Badass. Yeah, like, uh, like Ryan Mason. Like, uh, 
American soldier, but Toby Keith. Yeah. I don't have any really country. Do you have like have Johnny Cash's the Star Spangled Banner? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do have the Star Spangled Banner. I, I, I as performed I, by Christina Aguilera. Because I won't do it to anything else other than that. What is the mo- what is the most like oh, patriot. patriotic? Uh, what is the most patriotic thing I have on my iPod? Um, I don't know. Randy Newman. <laughs> oh, yeah. what? No, that's not gonna do it. No, hold on. The Ramones are pretty patriotic, right? Sure. Yeah, that's I'm good. Just a juggalo. <laughs> I'm trying. You just have like some like Chopin, like you just background music, like classical <sighs> music or something. I'm trying to find something really, really patriotic to for you to do it over. Hold on, hold on. Keep talking. Keep talking. Hey, uh, hello. It's either okay. Tom Waits or. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. There you go. Oh my! You want to do that? Sure. It's kind of country-ish, right? Go with it, people. Okay. This is a nice right. song. It's called "Long Way Home." Right. Go. Hey everybody, my name's Sean Shelnut. Some of you might have heard I spent some time in Iraq, <laughs> and I made a promise to a lot of people back in that day that one day I'd be on a radio competition, and that I promised I would win. Some of those people didn't make it back. Okay, and I'm uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to fulfill this promise that I made to these hopefully not forgotten heroes. You know, I don't even need the full minute. I think the message is clear. You probably shouldn't vote for anybody else. Be a hero like me. Oh my God, that was perfect. Beautiful. You can't you can't hear it, but the music was really good with that too. I'm just gonna say that. You and me, we just lost this thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think is so funny about this competition. You know, it had, lose now. <laughs> it's a, it's a, uh, it, it has been kind of a popularity contest, and we we're aware of that. And you know, like each one of us is funny, each one of us is unique, and there's plenty of reasons to vote for anybody that's in this competition. So, uh, do go out and vote. And if that, if the stuff on their website isn't isn't enough, take it from the Killer Radio Show and figure out who you want to vote for. <laughs> all right. We, we actually, it was funny, we went to the studios to actually record there, and uh, I was like, is it okay if I plug my radio show while I'm doing this? Because I, I don't want a conflict of interest. And they're like, Where, what's your radio station? And I was like, oh, riverwestradio.com. And they're like, oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. <laughs> I was like, hey, thanks a lot, Kaleo. Okay? It's cool that we're friends on Facebook now. Shout out to Kaleo. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's weird. I, I loved wandering around there. It was fun, wasn't I it? I just wandered around, and all of a sudden, like, I walk in the back, and there's this random dude sitting there. I'm like, hey, I'm Jason. He's like, I'm Tariq. Oh, the, f- the architect? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, hey, 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 buddy. I love, I I, I love 88.9. I think that, um, like, hopefully this radio station someday is as, uh, as prominent as they are in terms of listenership. Um, but we do something completely different here at Riverwest Radio, so I think we deliver a different content. But 89's great. Like they, they, they play cool music. Like that's yeah, you do. can't put a price on that. Um, so definitely go check that out on the website and uh, may the best man win. And uh, please don't listen to Sean's too many times because you'll tear up and then vote for him. So um, I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Um, Are we gonna do the hate, the hate the the slammering campaign? Oh, slam? Yeah, should we do one uh, one negative campaign? I want to do a negative campaign. Okay. Uh, who, are, who are we picking? Like, uh, you got to be both. I want to do Jason. I'm, I'll oh, do, yeah, I guess we would both I'll have do, to do... Both I'll do Jason. Her. Jason, you do a negative campaign for Sean, and then Sean, you do me. Okay? All right, sounds good. Okay, I'm going to find layering music for this, too. Yeah. Um, I'm, well, that is swear, isn't it? Can't do that. Yeah. Brian Mason's going down. <laughs> no, what one? Oh, oh, the fatty acids? Okay. This song is not uh, good for what we're doing here, but it'll work. It's a really soft song. Bye. You only get 30 okay. 30, oh. okay, time. Who's timing me? Oh boy. Okay, this is my negative ad towards Jason Hillman. Jason Hillman wants you to vote for him in the 88.9 Midwest Milwaukee Comedy Competition. But did you know that he's a Jew? (laughs) Some people would say that that's cheating, Jason. I'm one of them. 
No Jews in comedy. Jason Hillman isn't the type of comic that I want to see on stage with a major headlining comic. Aren't there enough Jews? <laughs> this message brought to you by Ryan Mason. Man. Okay, now you, you gotta do Sean Shellnut, okay? I'm gonna use the same music here, okay? I'll, I'll tell you when, okay? Sean Shellnut wants you to believe that he's a hero. <laughs> Let that sink in. <clears throat> Sean Shellnut once ate a baby in 2005. I don't know that for sure, but I don't know that he didn't do it. And that's something to consider. Never vote for someone that you don't know, even if they seem trustworthy. Like Sean Shellnut. Sean Shellnut. <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing. He's a Jew. I don't know. All right, all right, so Sean's up now. All right, Sean, this is your chance. Okay, be gentle, but this is your chance to undress me verbally. You ready? Okay, I'm gonna point at you, you ready? Ryan Mason is made of hatred. When he wakes up in the morning, he spews curses and naughty things at anyone nearby. Is that the kind of guy you want to vote for? He's not the guy I'm going to vote for. Do you want to vote for someone who says I'm not a hero either? He's right, I'm not. <laughs> vote for me. I approve this message. Sean Shauna looks like Louie Anderson. Oh, boo. Oh, come on. I'm Usually not saying he touches kids. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> oh, that was fun. <laughs> Should do a lot of that. I like sitting over here layering the music over it. It's a lot of fun. You guys have to go back and listen. Hopefully the listeners enjoyed that. Um, if you if you uh, if you enjoyed that, send us a tweet at Cast like Killers hashtag Killer Radio from us now. <laughs> <laughs> the accounts are going to start going down. Also, uh, make sure that you follow uh, Sean Sh comedian Sean Shelnut on Facebook. And what's your Twitter? Sean Shelnut at Twitter. Or whatever, uh, whatever, whatever the thing is, one L and two T's. That's right. Okay, right on. Um, we we've got some tweets. Why don't we read the tweets? Um, it's nine ten. I think you came on around nine or eight forty five or eight thirty. So we've got Sarandi Clichizo. Is it Clichizos or Clichizos? Clichizos. Somebody called you Sarandi Clichizos once, and like it stuck in my brain. Like I could not get rid of it so Sarandi Klikizos will be on um, I'm getting better at saying your name too every time I do it Sarandi Klichizos your brother Stavros Klichizos Stavros was Jesse Konsopoulos's what was Jesse Konsopoulos's other last name he had two last names in the show I'm I don't know Jason you know <laughs> no um, we got some tweets Eric yeah we got a, we got a couple of tweets here um, um, wow, that Sean Shelnut guy is really hot. Yeah, he is. <laughs> was that the first tweet? Was, no. Uh, He's really warm right now. <laughs> I am. Loth, Lothorn, Lothorn, um, she says, Ryan, your pog is a gun. Sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Um, Aiden Rady, uh, Rhubarb Mold. Thank you. Says, uh, You're getting better at this. There's a Power Rangers Pog Pack going for $200 on eBay right now. That must be the most expensive Pog Pack. Only five days left. Zero bids. Get in on it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then Garolb. Um, friend of the show. Friend of the show. He says, either it's the song y'all just played or some people in the video store got potty mouths. And then he said, also possible of interest to at Narcissus Narciss Moog. Jason, Ling Ling is trending. So, <laughs> well, I think some of the some of the music that we play sometimes has swears in it, um, but that's okay because I like the fatty acids and their music is cool. And then he tweets, "Forget the potty mouth stuff." Turns out I had a movie playing in the background. Lulls. <laughs> the Carol lulls. All right. I don't know if we can hang out anymore. Lulls. <laughs> and Yolo. At the end of that? Yolo. Yeah. L U L Z. Uh, Nobody. Then, none uh, of us said Yolo during our our one minute uh, vote for me. I should have said Yolo. Too busy living that one. Yeah, that is. Yeah. And then Lothorn again no tweeted. Uh, 
Jason found your Mortal Kombat slammer for ten bucks on eBay, what? and there's a link for that. So. Is it gold? Sounds like Jason's out ten bucks. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Well, let's uh, let's take a short break, and let's uh, b- before we bring Sarandi on, I'm gonna play some music by the Honest Sleeves, which I I almost have as much trouble saying as Why? Sarandi Klikizos. Why would you do that, you sick little man? Oh, I just saw Dude, just put his nuts up against the window. Yeah. Is that Nick? Yeah, Nick. I just saw Nick's nuts. <laughs> oh, I didn't see it. <laughs> that never happened. They must be really small. Well, you never know, guys. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are oh. we still live right now? We are. That's why I'm hoping to get a song. Hey, everybody. Right. I'm just going to fill some time right now while Ryan's looking for something. The song's called Hunting Grounds by the Honest Leaves. With your slack jaw, bloody grin, daring me to go. But my teeth to a bleeding and I planted in that door. I'll stand it till I'm naked, till the moon is washed ashore. For my darling, you're a being, a lovely, stubborn, broken beast. And all the thieves are at the table, finally working for the meals. So won't you please come in?
talk to him, you lead his mind astray. Be careful with your compliments, you give him too much confidence. You're leading him into the dark where his heart will stay. You find a girl, you'll fall in love. You'll find a girl, you'll fall in love. You find a girl, you'll fall in love. You find a girl, you'll fall in love. In love. No, I won't fuck it up this time. No, I won't fuck. Welcome back to the Killer Radio Show on RiverWestRadio.com. What up? I'm Ryan Mason. Your cue, Jason, to say who you are. I'm Jason Hillman. That's Jason Hillman. Hey. Sean Sean Ludd here. And we have Sarandi Klikizos is also here with a jar of pickles and onions. That's me. Welcome to the show, Sarandi. We we were talking about you, I think, uh, like two weeks ago, how we hadn't had you on, and um, being one of our favorite comics, along with Sean Chelnut, um, definitely wanted to get you onto the show. Well, so welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Sarandi's a Sarandi's a staple in Milwaukee comedy. He's a funny guy. He's a he's a. Would you say you're a weird guy? Do you think you're weird? I'm kind of weird. You're a little weird. I'm a little weird <laughs> in a good way. In a good way. Um, but Sarandi uh, was also, you heard music there from The Honest Sleeves. He was nice enough to reach out to a friend of his who has, uh, who, who is part of that band. You can check them out online. Uh, if you Google Honest Sleeves, I'm sure you can find their band camp and their music. So definitely check that out. Very cool stuff. Very mellow. Very like, you know, eat a haagen in your bedroom <laughs> kind of stuff. But everybody watching needs that. It's good Wa- music. Watching Bunheads. Yeah, last episode of Bunheads was pretty sad, you guys. I can talk about it. <laughs> At length, but you can follow me on Twitter. Bunheads? To show by Amy Sherman Palladino, who did Gilmore Girls on ABC Family. Of, co- of course. Yeah, so I'm surprised you didn't know about it. Um, <laughs> so, Sarandi, how long have you been doing, have you been doing comedy? Um, about a year and a half, maybe a little longer. 
Fascinating. Yeah, it's very intriguing. Um, I think that uh, it's really cool to have Sarandi on because you, you, you seem like a real uh, River West Bay, Bayview uh, kind of... What does that mean? Like, yeah. you're tapped into the music scene and you're tapped into the comedy scene. Like, you're a part of a lot of what's going on. You know, you're somebody that knows about the nightlife in the city in a way that some of us who are uh, boring don't. Oh, I don't know about that. You don't know about that? No, that's too far. Maybe you're just maybe you're just playing the part really good. Maybe it's just that you're like... You I know. know, I know some things. Yeah. I know some things. Go on, go on. You know. Tell us all about the things you know. Uh, um... How to make pickles? I know how to make yeah. pickles. I have some pickles here, uh, which are great for the nightlife. Um, I just say that because like you brought a band to the show, you play shows with bands. Like, is that? I, I I feel like that's not totally left field, right? Well, that's. I mean, it's that's really that's. I gotta credit Ryan Holman for. Oh yeah. For doing friend that. of the show. And um, here you go, Eric. Here's a fork. Sarandi is handing Eric a jar with pickles and onions in it, and he is eating a pickle now. Can I eat an onion too? Yes. Yeah, Don't them. double dip. We you know you're sick. <laughs> oh, you dropped yeah, don't it. Don't get us sick, Eric. You guys eating pickles on the air has got to be a highlight for us, right? Are you checking the standings? Yes, you're checking the standings right now. We're doing a show. Who's winning, though? Seriously. You. Yes. I'm, Mason, I'm losing by a long shot, and I'm okay with that. Okay. We so passed it. Maybe w what happens tonight will change some of that, because you were very convincing. <laughs> um, so, Sarati, why, why did you get into comedy? Um, why from the beginning or like, cause it's no from the middle from, from the okay, middle from, from the, the end <laughs> actually it's like a Pulp Fiction type yeah. thing just um, <laughs> cause I, I mean there there are two things you can do you can either you can either change like there's a say there's a problem that you want to address you can either you can either like try to solve that or work at it or whatever or you can talk about it. And and make fun of it, or you know, point out. I think I think all um, comics are good at at bull swooshing. Oh. Yeah, yeah. call that. I love it. Good for you. Yeah, I've been watching. So were you always? Were you always a bull and watching? Always a bull swoosher. Um, I think the. I mean, my. F I used to. Um, this is embarrassing. I used to watch Jay Leno every night, and I would... Wow. Yeah, not really. But I would stay Back up... Back in the day, though, like the 90s. Yeah, and I would stay up and watch... I would watch his monologue if there wasn't a comic on, and then I would turn the TV off. But if there was a comic that night, I would, I would watch... I would stay up late and watch that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I mean, it's... There's always been something that's really... Um, how, how can you laughing is the best thing it is the best it's the best there's nothing better than laughing yeah I mean Tupac said that there's no greater uh, there's no greater thing than I can't say this on the radio can I it's revenge and then the P word but I think laughter is in the mix I think it's <laughs> I think it's better because I think laughing you can get revenge and the P uh, and, like and puppies. Die. Yeah, that's true. You know, I, I think that you're not wrong. Like, I think that uh, sometimes you have things in you that you want to say. And, like, when you're angry or when you're down, you, there's a reason to all of that. And then you can get on stage and you can talk about whatever you want. Like, you can bring that to the stage. Or you can just make somebody else laugh about yeah. whatever you're saying. And that's going to make you feel good. And I think that's, is that what kind of you're saying? Or you can make them forget about all the bull swoosh that they're dealing with yeah absolutely yeah i think that's probably one of the best things about going on stage is like you know that if you made one person laugh or if you made one person nod their head in agreement with you that uh that they had a good time like they, they could relate to somebody totally were you always somebody that could relate to other people yeah <laughs> i still struggle with that it's like you know like it's not um it's not a some things just don't make sense. And like Word, some people well <laughs> I know that sounds That's dumb. messed up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, like obviously you could relate to other people with like lots of hard consonant sounds in their name. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a given. Klikizos. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanopoulos. So you've, taken a, you've taken it as your mission to do what most comics do, which is try to relate to people while standing above them and giving them, forcing your opinion down their throat. Yeah. Um, that's how you relate to people, is telling them what they think is wrong and then telling them how to think. That's, that's what I, I do? That's really what I've That is what do. I do, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. I totally do that. Yeah. Well, oh, part of no. comedy is trying to convince people that your opinion is right. If people yeah. are laughing, they're agreeing in some sense. Yeah, right? a lot of that laughter comes from understanding. Like, oh, my goodness, yeah. Woo! Yes. Yeah. Or being very uncomfortable. <laughs> yes, yeah. or being very uncomfortable. Those are my favorite laughs. See, if yeah. I don't laugh, is he going to pee on us? I don't understand what this That's is. That's out there, too. Has Where do you have... think you fall? Do you the think G. G. you fall? The Allen of comedy. I prefer not to pee on people. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Well, well, that's, that's your fine. personal choice. That's, that's fine. Right. Like, nobody's saying you have I'm to. I'm no R. Kelly. Robert I'm Kelly. not saying you have to pee on 15-year-olds, though, because they wouldn't no, be at the 14. comedy club in the first place. Because She's 14. She's 14, I think. She's 14. Oh, 14? Yeah, 14 year Oh, man, she couldn't even drive yet? No. No, no. Oh. She I guess she would be paddling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was dropped off. <laughs> so you're... I uh, took her to a Dollar General to pick up some paper towels. So yeah, Ryan Holman uh, came on the show. He talks about uh, some of the things that are going on in uh, this, the shows that he's booking, uh, booking shows with bands, um, booking shows at rock clubs. You've done a couple of those shows. You and I did a show mm -hmm. um, at the Cactus Club together. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, did. Can you talk about uh, what it's like to do a show at a rock club as, a, as opposed to a comedy club? I think that place specifically has, um, you know, it's, it's a younger, it's a crowd like our age. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming we're all in like our mid 20s. I'm 34. Mid to late. <laughs> I'm 47. Thank you. So, huh. Thank you. I'm still 30. Well then. Not going to lie about that. Okay, so I'm wrong. No, I'm 27. You're 27? I'm 28. Right on, bro. Yeah. But yeah, so it's it's a lot of like-minded people, I guess. Yeah, it was good. It um, it was good because that night was pretty packed, and it was a lot like a show there. Like, but, yeah. But for a different reason, so. Yeah, I felt like there was such an energy in like the rock clubs. It's diff it's a different kind of energy mm -hmm. that when you go on stage at a rock club, people are standing there. There's like you can feel that like they have like that. That energy that, that you could, like, I could have went up there and made balloon animals and I would have been funny because I just could feel that coming off of them. Do mm -hmm. you find yourself changing uh, anything about your jokes depending on what you're feeling from the audience? I think you have to. Um, <laughs> this is really serious comedy thing. Yeah, what do you want me to do? you want to talk about something different? No. Um, no Eric almost bought a chicken. Like a live one? Like a live one, yeah, we talked what? about it earlier. From who? Seven Mile Fair. I just caught that. That was, I was listening from home. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you been to Seven Mile Fair? I haven't. No, you they should sell go. Chickens? You should they sell chickens. They sell. They sell live everything. animals. They sell leather scraps. They sell everything. Live animals, dead animals. My girlfriend was just asking me where can we get some chicken. So <laughs> now. If you brought her a live one, would she be like confused or pissed? Well, I know how to kill chickens, so... Well, don't we all? <laughs> Choke it, right? Yeah, really. It's so by the, by the time she got don't. it, by the time she got the chicken, it would be, I would hope... How do you kill a chicken as opposed to the, like, the way I was thinking about killing a chicken, which is just killing the chicken? Like, Slice the snack, right? Hands. There are a couple... I think a lot of people... I mean, if like you... <laughs> on a farm, what you do is you take the... You get, like, a stump. And, and then, you live on a farm, right? I, I live on a farm across the street. Um, okay. Right over there. All right. Yeah. And I, but I did, I did, and. Um, oh, that's right. You live right across the street from the studio. Yeah, I the do. Studio. There's a, a stump, and you put two nails in it, or whatever. And this is really. Can I talk about this? It's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's a chicken. It's not Get a vivid. person. A lot they of don't people. Have feelings. A lot They're of people subhuman. would be weirded out by it because they think it's it's gruesome or whatever. But it's really the best way, is. To just cut its head off, and that's what, yeah, you, that's yeah, what yeah. you do. And they around, put their heads off. no, you hold you hold them by the legs, and you pull you put their neck between. So Randy's laughing nails. right now while he's saying this. By <laughs> the way, you put their head between the two nails, and you take their feet, and their head can't move because it's trapped between two nails. And then you get like an such ass. as life. I've felt that way, and <laughs> between two nine-inch nails, you pull them taut, <laughs> and uh, chop its head off. And you try to do it in Fun one. Shot. Have you ever killed a chicken? Are you serious yeah. about yeah, this? Yeah, I have. How do you, when did you kill a chicken? When I lived on a farm. 
So that was serious? Yeah. So you when did you live on a farm? Open? This was years ago. You lived on a farm? I lived on a farm for nine months, but it's not, I mean, that's... <laughs> And you killed chickens. I was, I was pregnant, so. Oh, well, so you were bringing it to, to right. term. I mean, I heard that's the best way to handle being pregnant is to kill chickens on a farm. Well, if you're well, gonna be pregnant, you, vodka. they say the land is really fertile. Vodka. I'm no snooky, so uh. I'm no snooky. I said. Oh. So you've lived on a farm. I've never heard you do like barnyard jokes. Have you done any barnyard jokes? No. No, like, you know, old McDonald had a farm kind of stuff? No. That's good stuff for kid crowds, it's a kitty crowds. I think if you can make, I think, they went bankrupt. if you can treat an audience like their children, like, I think doing stuff that would yes. make kids laugh, I think that would make adults laugh even more. Oh, yeah. It's, it's hard yeah, for... I know a lot of people have tested that theory and they're in jail now. But, mm. like, uh, like, adults, we give too much credit sometimes to the audience that they're going to be in tune with everything that you're saying as they, they've read the same things or they have the same cultural background as you. But, like, kids can all relate to each other because they're kids. Like, you know, the sky is blue, the grass is green. And some things are just silly. And yeah. Kids like silly things, and I think adults like silly things, too. Oh, yeah. I think I think you're a very silly comic. I think uh, I think Sean's silly, at you know, when he's on stage telling jokes, doing funny impressions of people. Um, I do some really silly jokes as well that are stupid, very yeah. stupid things. Stupid, silly. I think stupid is the way to go. And when you're talking stupid, you got to talk Eric Thorson. Uh, oh, it's, not really, it's not really, he doesn't really talk, does he? Oh, okay. I don't know if he talks. He's off mic, so. Tweet us your barnyard jokes at castkillers, hashtag killer radio. Um, so we were talking uh, outside a little bit. You're, you're an entrepreneur. Is this true? I started a... Um, it's a hating card business. Uh, we make cards that are really mean that you can give to your friends who know how to take the joke. Sure. Um, it's called gloom cards, and um, are they handmade cards? They're they're designed. Okay. Like we design them from scratch, and uh, we'll be selling them on Etsy and some other like hoping to do craft shows and stuff. What is, uh, can you give us an example of a gloom card? Like, what would be one that I would, front of the card and then open up? Okay, so the front of the card would be like, happy birthday, and then on the inside, you're adopted. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good. That's an okay one. So, birthdays, what would like a gloom card for uh, an anniversary be? Um, don't put, oh, God. Take that. Uh, one, Live radio, Sarandi. One okay, one hundred percent of divorces start with marriage. <laughs> <laughs> These are going to be a hit. I can't. I can't wait. Yeah, I think there's a good. I mean, we have a Facebook page, and you know, definitely a market for making people feel bad about themselves. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all in good fun, but not really. Because <laughs> you get because you guys glean joy from watching other people be miserable, and we also get their money. Yeah. Right on. So. Yeah. So the, um, are you in the competition? The, the no, I'm not. No, you're not. I'm not. You're I decided, I decided that I should stay out of it because of, just co- I, I work for one of, or I work for the venues that they're going to be at. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. um, yeah, conflict of interest. Not even you, though I mean they said can it you was. You say who you work for? Yeah, I work for the Pabst Riverside and Turner Hall Ballroom. Oh, very cool. Yeah. See, you are tapped into like music and, <laughs> and nightlife. Then why are you lying to me? Well, because I'm, Cause I because I like comedy more. Like I, not oh, more, I but yeah, it's yeah. like you know that's my thing. And sure, I can see that. Yeah. I get that. You're I don't a funny go to guy. I don't go to a ton of shows, but no. Okay, what what were you, do you have comedy influences? Are you, like it sounds like you grew up. Uh, taking in a lot of comedy like it interested mm-hmm. you from a um not just wanting to do it but mm-hmm. um taking it in and actually uh consuming it do you still consume comedy and like what it, what's yeah. i guess what's your favorite thing that you'd like to laugh at um i'm a i'm a comedy nerd um uh, i mean i would say like the first guy who i really really got into was mitch hedberg when i was like 16 i think and sure. Stephen Wright, uh, Steve Martin, Stevie Wonder, Stevie Wonder, Stevie Nicks, Stevie Nicks. Mm-hmm. all all professional Steve Winwood jokes. Steve Winwood, Ray Charles, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Fox, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. I think like now, like I have trouble. Like people ask that question a lot. And, like I am guilty of asking that when I can't think of a good. 
better question of, you know, what are your influences and stuff. But as I get more into doing comedy, I find it harder and harder to actually consume comedy. Not when not live. Like, live, I love listening to my friends do comedy and hearing them. But, like, I find it harder and harder to listen to, like, professional comics. Why? I don't know why. Hmm. I, but, agree. I agree. I'm the same way, I think. I think part part of it is like seeing them do something that I want to do and just not wanting to see like how good they are <laughs> yeah. like that's part of it. And the other part is that like I don't want undue influence. Like I'd rather be influenced by um, like an average Joe who talks funny. Like I'd rather be influenced by that because that's funny to me and I think that's transferable as yeah. opposed to somebody who's like doing a bit. Well, I think for me it's mostly about words and language and like when I write a joke, it's mostly I'm trying to like write as few words as possible and and still mm -hmm. deliver the message so that's really i think that's the only time you can forgive yourself for like really parsing words like sometimes it's hard to get rid of babies like you write something long and you want to keep it all but like yeah. for it to achieve its full glory you have to diminish it for mm -hmm. it to really be effective and that's one of the hardest but most gratifying things it's the only time i don't feel bad about like massacring language Hey, yeah, of, you're very cool for... A bunch of dudes, yeah, YOLO. A lot of people who look like YOLO. this. YOLO! Like they say YOLO walking Mellow by. YOLO. Do you say YOLO, Sarandi? I, uh, I don't. Well, you should, YOLO. I should. Because you're living it. You're living it, man. Every day. Hey. Every day. Oh, now these people are coming in. Uh, but if I did, um, I would uh, YOLO tango. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is so dumb. It's so dumb. Right. Um, well, I want to talk about something that uh, is on our list. So, I, and I tried to do a joke about it and failed miserably. Did you? Are you? Do you follow the news at all? Uh, not, not Doesn't really. Doesn't matter. I mean, okay. <laughs> um, so. Aiken, Todd, uh. Todd Aiken I, is in, okay. This he, yes, he's in my craw. I would say, and we have a we've got a, a show here. We can talk about you know current issues. <laughs> Todd Aiken's a senator from Missouri who basically said that if a woman is uh, Republican senator, I should say, he said that if a woman is is raped, that legitimately raped, legitimately raped, that those are his words, not mine, that he would or that they would be able to. Quote, shut it down. There like, are parts. There's something in the in the, in the woman's the vagina that, if it's a legitimate rape, I eh, would just shut that stuff down. This is according. Way. This is according to um, how he understands what a doctor told him. Is that what he a said? That's what he said. Yeah. A num he said from what? Like I forget the. Is exact. it a witch doctor? He said, based it's on Tony. like some yeah. conversations he's had with doctors, that's his interpretation. Is that the yeah. body will <laughs> will shut down baby making? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? I like to think that, like, okay, we're... Well, if you're getting legitimately raped, what happens is, like, Jesus appears in your vagina. Sure. Just punches, punches the egg to death. Like, make sure the baby dies. Like, just Jesus wow. in there wow. banging. Jesus that, banging. Yeah, like that. with that, that baby with his fists. I like he knows the, you can't have it. I like the thought that he, yeah. like, you know, some conversations I had with a doctor, you know, uh, but you know that the only places that he is regularly talking to a doctor is, like, at a country club like six gin and tonics deep, yeah. right? And dentists Do, don't count. No, yeah. they don't. And why would it's he be talking to him about getting raped? Is <laughs> yeah. he getting raped? I don't know. Do you I think mean, they were like, uh, no, it's cool, Todd. Uh, that'll probably just shut that down. Yeah, you I'm don't have really, to worry about it, Todd. I love how all of these conversations, and there's been some women like Jan Brewer, actually, and Michelle yeah. Dawson made comments along these lines. They've been saying this kind of stuff for, for years now. But I like how the majority of people that have these conversations are people with penises. Yeah. Like the, the, the conversations about the elaborate majesty of the vaginal baby making process is always discussed by men. Like they had a, a meeting uh, in Congress like for birth control re uh, legislation and they banned women from it. They and didn't the, ban it, they just didn't ask any of them. But when one woman tried to show up and complain, they like it made a fuss. They yeah. made it into a big scene. It's just so weird. It's it just weird. so weird. But is that, I mean, oh man, politics. People are on the streets dying, our education standards are at an all time low, but guess what? We're trying to figure out what's legitimate rape and what's not. Yeah, like who invented you know what's the bra? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, right? True. Uh, Harold Bra, wasn't yeah. it? I think, it was I think so, Bra. Mr. Bra. Stevie Bras. <laughs> yeah. Some big bra. <laughs> oh, YOLO. I, I like that. Okay, so Todd Aiken didn't back down. If you made, the, if you made yeah, a comment like that, down. you would back down, right? 
Cerani. I would never make that comment. <laughs> like, no, but Cerani, look, you just made that comment. No. Like, you just said it on nope. national TV. Not came out of your mouth. Oh, dear. That's what would How would you apologize or what would you say after that? What would your next comment be? I would Suicide. admit to using, like, drugs. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's the mushrooms. <laughs> I would blame it on that, because seriously, who... You blame it on the Who a- a- in their a- right a- mind alcohol? would say anything so... That's... Dumb. It doesn't... It's not even dumb. It's like... <laughs> the nuts I it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Well, like, it's, it's, it, I love how... Uh, now all of the like severely right wing people have been saying nonsensical stuff like this for a long time, or all of a sudden like whoa whoa whoa, okay that's a little too far for us. Like people no, like they, John Johnny Boner John are Boehner. like Johnny Boner are just are backing <laughs> away from it. Like well we don't necessarily agree with what he's saying. Uh, he doesn't share the same viewpoint as us, which but is a fancy that, way of saying like we don't share the same viewpoint so publicly. But they're saying that because there's a chance that he could lose the seat. Like they don't even. Didn't not, he resign? Doesn't matter. From, no, he's he's, he's staying still in the going, race. Yeah, against a woman he, of all things. That's did hilarious. A, didn't he apologize? Didn't he? He, he apologized. misspoke. He yeah. said he misspoke. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Because okay. he was like, no, what I meant to say was illegitimate rapes <laughs> and baby falls out. Now, what it. I meant to say was if you tickle somebody during a legitimate rape, then a baby can't be made. You gotta I tickle love, them in their arms. Is armpits. this making you guys uncomfortable? This... Did you know that Ray Charles wore a bra? <laughs> is that true? <laughs> no. Did you got you, tweets, maybe. you got angry lady tweets, I think. Did you know that um, Ray Charles was was legitimately raped? <laughs> <laughs> by music. By music. Yeah, by music. And his heroin dealer. And heroin, by heroin, yeah. <laughs> and blindness. Yeah. Yes. And blindness and Oscars. did rape him. <laughs> Most importantly. Eric, do we have some tweets? Yeah, we have some tweets. We have some tweets. They're going a, a little far back, uh, but I'll read them all. Uh, yeah, you will. At Debbie Lynn Mason says, vote for Ryan because... Yeah, why don't you put your social to... security number out there too, Mom? <laughs> Just put your full name. What, did, what is it? Vote for Ryan because his parents need to retire. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because uh, this so show I won't pay. Yeah, that show I'm not going to get paid for. Gee, I wish I had a mom that loved me. My and, mom loves um, you. She says, Adam Sandler is a Jew. So don't hold that against me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was sticking up for you. <laughs> and uh, Garrel really liked the music, and he said they did sound like Cat Power. You're right on, right? Cool. And he said, "Honest, what? W U T." So they like Garrel lulls and what? W U T. I have no idea half of what you just said. That the was, honest he didn't. sleeves. That's um, what it is. The honest yeah, sleeves. Yeah, tweeted on the the name of it because yeah, they're great. That they're much. really good. She's a beautiful voice. What is? She do does. You, I've, get, get, I've, um, it comes, her voice is in her throat. <laughs> Stop. And uh, again, Debbie Lou Mason says, knew a family who used to butcher chickens, sit around a kid's pool filled with blood to pick the feathers off. Okay, um, mom. So, yeah. good to... That was on an episode of Full House, wasn't it? <laughs> I think it was American Horror Story. Maybe. I'm not sure. Family Matters. And Garob says, step step. we were talking about what we were just talking about, and he says, no, 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 he was asking for pointers because he had a target. He was concerned she might get pregnant and thus evidence. <laughs> that was pretty good. Mm. Yeah. Good one, Garob. Yeah, Garob, thanks for that one. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? 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 So you were saying that yeah, yeah. Uh, the honestly? How do you how do you know them? How do you know the band? They did a set at Sugar Maple. Okay. Um, that I I think yeah. Sean was at actually too, oh, yeah. and so was Eric, and uh, yeah, they were great, and so met after the show and smoked a J. Ask the rest is history, bro. No. No. Listen to some Almond Brothers creeped into our van and just sped on till morning, y'all. Woke up at Bonnaroo. Hey, Burning Man. <laughs> Burning Man starts soon. You guys aware of this? Yeah. Burning yeah, Man? Yeah, I am. Uh, Nicole's, my girlfriend's cousin, tweeted that Burning Man's starting soon. You can tell by the sales of gas masks and ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you can also tell because the Castro in San Francisco is empty. Well, not the Castro. It's not the Castro. Uh, hate Ashbury. Yeah, hate Ashbury empties like. Really? Uh, yeah, like a lot of people leave, and you can actually go there and not feel like a normal person. Like you just <laughs> like like because there are a lot of weirdos there. And, sure. 
Would there. you ever go to Burning Man? I would go. You would go? I would go. I would go what about you, Sean? I would go a second. You know what? I'm not going to lie. I don't even know what it is. You YOLO. Wanna, do you want to explain oh. what Burning Man is? <laughs> Surrounding, explain to, to Sean what Burning Man is. Um, br- As if he was five. No, explain who Bernie Mac is. <laughs> because I'm Seth. Well, he's this comic. <laughs> he's very um, black. <laughs> he wears suits and... NASA! <laughs> Burning Man, how I understand it, is like a big festival in the desert. Right. And they make an effigy of a person and they set it on fire and they have like art and everyone's half naked so it's like and river west in the in the desert it's like extreme river west <laughs> um it's like fun lucia copious <laughs> amounts of of uh, illicit illicit substances and um it's like the movie go so do you yeah. want to go with Sarandi, yes. <laughs> okay. I think right. it would be fun. I mean, yeah. it's, I feel like I, I feel like we I, s- go. I see Sarandi like at his house packing his car to go to Burning Man, and it's just like you're just like lifting cases of pickles into the, <laughs> the trunk, and Sean like, Chicken sure, we don't need more stuff for. Uh... <laughs> no, I got I got two cases of pickles we should be good man stop at seven mile fair on the way there <laughs> yeah. get some chickens keep right. them keep them live keep them live <laughs> and then Cook sacrifice them, fresh. them to the burning man yeah sean's got sean's like packing mres he's right. like all we need is water that's it who wants yeah. chicken and pickles <laughs> beef beef frankfurter <laughs> right oh man that's funny um we're getting close to the end of the show we usually end about five minutes before uh 10 o'clock so um let's give a second to all the comics including uh the members of the uh host crew to plug shows is that cool why don't we start with uh Sarandi. also gloom cards you can plug that again yeah too. um so gloom cards are coming soon you can find us on facebook facebook.com slash gloom cards um I'm also giving a uh, scuba diving class to uh, in utero babies. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Um, well, obviously they can't snorkel. They taught me, so I figured they I, taught should, me. I should give back to the community. Um, I don't have any shows lined up, so okay, got to focus on the business and <laughs> some other projects. Okay. But yeah, thanks. You'll definitely see Sarandi uh, at shows, um, you know, working stuff out at the open mics. So go see open mics. Um, and when Sarandi's name is on a bill, either at um, any of those shows that Ryan Holman books, Sugar Maple, uh, uh, what is this one? Right? Stonefly, <laughs> uh, Cactus Club, uh, Karma, any of those places that you see Sarandi's name, go see him because he's a super funny guy yeah. and handsome. I mean, let's just get it out there. Yeah, his, his beard is looking He's good. got a beard. He's got, like, luxurious sharp. hair. He's... I plucked my eyebrow for the show. You did? Mm-hmm. Good for you. Yeah, look, there's nothing there. It is a funny wow. show. But... I mean... He's, he's hey, a 10, a guys. He's a 10. Yeah. Sean? Well, let's see. Uh, this Saturday, I got a 10 minute audition at the Comedy Cafe. I'll be there. Um, right on. If I do well there, you guys will see a whole lot more of me at Comedy Cafe. And then uh, Sunday, I'll be in Madison with Mr. Eric Thorson at the Prolo uh, Comedy Showcase. Um, and then uh, I'm actually starting a talk That's show. That's a great show, by the way. Yeah, I'm excited. We're really yeah, excited to go. Excited, yeah. um, and then I'm starting a talk show that I'll be filming next week that yeah, I'm going to be doing it uh, with the cast of Killers, and uh, I'll be hosting that and get to see a whole bunch of comedians on there, kind of like the radio show, except uh, a lot more video and cool stuff. A lot more cool stuff? Yeah, a lot more a lot more cool. It's going to be tough, but, I mean, you know, I'm going to try my best. Good luck. I think also luck the Prolo you. is looking for a new place. Yes. So we should, if anybody knows a place in Madison mm-hmm. that they can uh, do their shows from. Yeah, reach out to us. Uh, uh, I know that we have listeners in Madison. The, the Project Lodge, is a, uh, it was on uh, East Johnson. Uh, it was a small art gallery where they were hosting some comedy shows. 
uh, and it's a really great venue, but unfortunately they have to move on. Uh, and I know that there's a lot of venues in Madison. If you have any direct connections with a venue, I think that's the best way to do it. You can suggest places that they might want to try, and you can send those to us, but um, Chris Lay and Jay Abendanza really do a great job with that. Um, Sean, do you have other, any other shows you want to play? Uh, I'm doing a MS Benefit show in uh, September, Saturday the 15th, I think. Uh, I don't have the details for it, but I'll be doing uh, 10 to 20 minutes of comedy there as well. Right on. That's it. For me, that's it for me. YOLO. YOLO. Uh, I'm just going to promote the open mic tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, Karma open mic. Uh, fantastic stuff. Come on out. Starts at 8. It's one of the best open mics in the city. Uh, I'm YOLO. sorry. The best open mic in the, the city right going on right now. Uh, what else? There's nothing more important that you, the audience, can do except vote for Jason Hillman. Jason Hillman. Jason Hillman. Ray Charles. Jason Hillman Ray Charles. on the 88.9 website. Watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. Ray Jason Charles. Hillman is the Frost. choice of champions. 100% juice, ladies and gentlemen. 100% juice. Juice? Juice. <laughs> um, juice. Go ahead, Eric. I was going to plug uh, Art Bar. Yeah. Art Bar. Oh, yeah. Bar. That's this yeah. Thursday. Thursday night. Second, fourth, Thursdays. Yep. Uh, make sure you come on out to Art Bar. It starts. It's Thursday night. It'll start somewhere around 8, 30, 9 o'clock. So get out there early and go see a show at Art Bar. It's a really great venue. We really want to see more people attend there um, because, you know, we, we just want that to continue to be a success. Yeah. Um, I'll plug, yeah, vote for myself, vote for Sean Shelnut, vote for um, Sean Shelnut and yeah. myself. <laughs> and I guess Jason Nelman. And uh, who? Uh, definitely Art Bar. I'm going to be there. I have a show. If you live in the... Uh, Nina Appleton area I will be at the Comedy Quarter on Saturday um, doing a show so that should be a lot of fun it's going to be a, a really I think the, the headline comic is Ken Evans and uh, it should be a lot of fun so please come on out to that and after that definitely mark your calendars for September 8th and for September 28th those are both going to be the first one is Center Street Days where you'll see members of this radio show uh, and also uh, the 28th is going to be a, just a live show for uh, the radio station and, and that's going to be a lot of fun and, um, if you do have any financial support that you want to, to bring to this show if you like this show, if you listen to this show please uh, got this show pregnant. Please send uh, you, can come, Legitimately. you can come right down to uh, River West Film and Video and donate in person or if you get in touch with one of us we can certainly make that happen as well. We'll definitely take your money. Yeah, we'll take your money and we'll put it towards a good cause. We are working on getting t-shirts uh, for the show so keep listening so that uh, when we get those ready to go um, that you can throw one on. YOLO. Uh, thanks to all you guys for coming out. This has been a fun show. I had a good time. Thanks a lot. Um, get out and vote, you guys. Get out and vote. Rock the vote. Vote or die. Vote or die. I'm going to play us out with one of our favorites. Uh... This is Nato Coles and the Blue Diamond Band. Um, so let me, uh, if I can find it, because I'm a dum dum. And, and oh, hey, and good job on not swearing. Yeah, I'd, me. Fudge yeah. Everybody, everyone. I feel like Jason came the closest of all of us. The song is called Center Street Days. <laughs> you want to listen to that? Too?